Greetings everyone, I'm TJB Chris, welcome back to the channel, and tonight we have another Model 4 video, because apparently the Model 4 is the shiny object that has my attention these days. Tonight we're going to upgrade this machine from 64K of RAM on board, as evidenced by that lovely badge there, up to 128K. I don't yet have a badge for it, if it's successful, I'll order one of J New Earth's reproduction badges that are so awesome. But until then, I'm going to save you the rigmarole of taking this thing apart. You've seen it a thousand times watching any of my other Model 4 videos for the most part to see that. Otherwise, yeah, let's get this thing apart and we'll get right to it. All right, covers off. Here's that lovely graphics card I put in last time. And one quick note that I won't go into too much detail here about, but this is a gate array machine. I'm only mentioning this because the upgrade process is different. So if yours looks like this, the process I'm doing will work for you. If it don't, then it won't. So the first thing we're going to have to do here is remove this graphics card, which I will do. The machine is plugged in so I can ground myself out. So I will carefully unhook, unlatch this from whence it came. Okay, and remove the graphics card. And set it aside. In the RAM department, the RAM chips are down here. They're U67 through U74 here. The non-gate array machine has a PAL that you have to install. In addition, this one does not. So the cost-reduced machine does not. What we're going to have to do, though, is we're going to have to populate these chips with 4164 chips. And importantly, the Model 4 won't take any off-the-shelf 4164s. You need 128-row refresh, um, not the 256 that's common. I have a whole drawer full of 256 rows that I can't use. Fortunately, I have chips that will work. We're going to put those in, and then we have to do a little bit of surgery here to tell the machine that there is, in fact, 128K on board. There are later versions of this machine that actually have a jumper here that I could just jump, but what I'm going to have to do is jump this wire down to pin 16 on U33, which is what we're going to do. So first things first, let's get the chips in, and then we'll move on to dealing with this wire here, which hopefully I can deal with in place, but we'll see how that goes. All right, so first off, the chips. Chips installed. Now what we have to do is this jumper wire here has to go from the bottom of C39 over to pin 16 of U33. So I've got the iron warmed up, and I'm hopefully going to be able to detach that fairly easily. And then once I get that detached, we'll move it over to its rightful location, if I can get my cord over here. Okay, here we go. And there we are. We'll just try and get you a little zoomed in there. Let's see if we can get a good beat on that. And there we are. Pin 16 of U33. So now we should be able to get the top and spin it up and at least see if the thing fires up. A little addendum. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that I used 41256 chips instead of 4164s. If you have 128 row refresh chips, the pinout works except for one little thing. Pin 1 is address line A8, which you have to ground out, because if you don't and you let it float, bad things will happen. And as you can see here, I've used bodge wires to ground out each of the pin 1s on each of the chips. I just bridge them all together, and then bridge them all to this ground right here on this screw. And that essentially lets them function as 4164s. Time for the power-up test. I'm going to do the very first power-up, which is just Model 3 Basic. We'll see if I get a boot prompt and or a cassette prompt. I'm going to hold break here. And I hear the drive spinning, but well, the video is inverse, and that's not good, so something's wrong. It occurred to me right after I shut the camera off that I neglected to install the graphics card. And with the graphics card not installed, there's a jumper that would need to be in place on the expansion connector that was not there. Seems to me that was probably the problem, so let's try this again. Hey, that looks better. All right. So, yeah, uh, dummy, don't get ahead of yourself. Put graphics card in. See, the, my excitement in upgrading this machine just got away from me. Okay. All back together now. Let's run a diagnostic on it before we get to playing with fun stuff. I'm going to run the Model 4 diagnostic on there, which will test 128K of memory, and should give us a pretty good idea if everything is working fine in the Model 4. I know the chips themselves are good, or at least I'm relatively sure, because I ran them through the Retro Chip Tester Pro off-camera but I do want to make sure that they are actually in okay and that the bodge job I did with gro uh, grounding pin one of the new chips actually is going to keep them reliable and work. So 
Let's power this up and I need to flip the disc over because I think it's on my Fred Auto Boot disc. So we'll just hit break to boot. Watch me push buttons. Riveting television, folks. Riveting, riveting television. It's time for TJB Chris pushes buttons. Okay, Model 4 Diag. Reset. And this just boots Tristos 1.3. It's funny, the Model 4 diagnostics run in Model 3 mode. And here we go. We're going to go M for mem menu. And I did use my brain and do the read the PDF version of the manual that's online for this, so I know what I'm getting into. We're going to run 2 M4 mem. And here we go. So reading through the top lines, this is going to scroll the video. And because this is the 64128K test, it relies on the weight just generated by the floppy controller. So every few seconds, the drive motor runs for the first, what, six minutes of the test or so. And that repeats every hour as it goes through the test over and over again every hour that will do that. Um, the other thing this will do is at about half an hour, and it's going to flip to 64 column mode, 64 by 16, and keep rolling. And then at one hour, it'll flip back. So we're going to let this go for at least an hour. Uh, as a description for the top line, this is the bank it's testing. You can see bank 0, 1, 2, uh, banks, and 3. The top banks are the new memory, 60 hertz machine, uh, ECH. Uh, that, oh, that's port ECH. So it tests port Z80 port ECH, um, that's EC hex, uh, with port FF, and that's okay. LP bad, that's the line printer. Um, there's a jig you can build, so I should do that. The next two numbers are the ROM A checksum, ROM B, ROM C time running, and the amount of memory it thinks it has, which is 128K. So, enough jabbering, I guess. Well, and there we have it. We're an hour and three minutes in, and the test is still running. That's good. If it fails out, I believe the screen will change to an error message, and it will even um, identify some information about where the fault is in the computer's estimation. But we are not there. We're back to square one on the 80 by 24 screen. The drive motors are cycling every six seconds or so. And we're at a point where I am confident that the memory is good. So now that we have good memory, I'm going to do something less arduous and boring and more fun, and that is we're going to play with some stuff that actually uses the 128K in the Model 4. Let's do uh, the first thing that kind of always made me want 128K and probably one of the less useful things just because I have the Tris I.O. connected and that is we're going to make a RAM disk. And we're going to do that using LS-DOS's built-in mem disk feature. So first let's take a look and see what drives we have. I think we have four and five. Okay, so drive six is available. So the driver here for those of you wondering, is called Memdisk. And this was actually in Tristos 6.0. So if you had these machines back in the day, this was here. So let's do this. System drive equals 6. Disable driver equals Memdisk. You don't have to put the DCT. Technically, I didn't need the closing paren. Here we are, Memdisk 631. Pretty little menu here. Bank 0. Primary memory, lower 64K. You'll only get a small RAM disk, and you won't have much memory to do much else with, but you can do that. I can do bank 1 or bank 2 or both banks 1 and 2. Let's do that. D. D, double density, what the heck. I do want to format it. And there we are. Directory has been placed on cylinder 1. And there we go. So as an example here, let's just let's start basic. And with the disk to Tris IO, it starts relatively quickly, but there's still a little bit of a delay. Let's now copy basic CMD to drive six and run it from drive six. And that should go faster. Alright, here we go. Slightly faster. But of course, remember in the floppy days, when you didn't have hard drives or hard drive emulators on these things, that was way faster than loading it from a floppy disk. So 
in a sense, this would be a great place to store your operating system. You can back up some of your system files over there and then swap the drive 6 and drive 0, and you could actually use the memdisk as your system drive until you reboot. So now, I want to see what the difference is between single and double density. I have no idea. The only thing I can imagine is maybe it's a question of allocation units. So we can see with the memdisk here, I've got 33k free, because basic is on there in the directory track. And we've got 63k total. And there's 120, 128 file slots, of which 111 are free. So let's do this. Actually, what else is on there? Oops. Dersys and Bootsys. Gotcha. OK, because the directory blocks itself out. OK, great. Let's do this. Let's disable the memdisks. OK, E. OK. OK, let's recreate this drive as a single density drive. I'm curious to see what this does. Do banks one and two again. Remember, it was 63K. Uh, single density. Yes, I do. It's formatting faster. More cylinders. Hmm. OK, yeah, so 6250K, so we lose a half a K. Fewer files, more cylinders. One position equals 1.25K. And Dummy here just realized that he did not look to see what the position size was in the other one. But hey, it's on camera, so we'll just have to voice over that right now. Anyway, uh, let's do it. Let's, let's free this memory again. Oops. Drive equals six. Disable driver equals mem disk. I'm going to E again. OK, so now I have no mem disk. What else can we do with this? Well, we can actually run something like VisiCalc, which I have already copied onto my Trisio. And VisiCalc is kind of cool because up in the top right here, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera with the reverse video that's here, that 90 is the number of kilobytes free. And in fact, I think if you run this on a 64K system, you'll get something like 29 or 26 or something. Either way. Um, so I have 90K available for a fairly large spreadsheet. And for a machine like this, that's pretty huge. So, you know, I can, I can chart out my expenses. You know, we've got whores, whiskey, Oh, not EY, whiskey, w, 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 oh, crap. Can I clear that? How do I delete that? I don't know. W-H-I-S-K-Y. Okay, I'm going to have a Y there. And we're just going to total. All right, and this is 1983. I don't know what the whore going to run me in 1983. Back alley variety, 25 bucks. I don't know. You get a free case of the clap with it. Whiskey 6. So now I think if I do um, in VisiCalc, I only know a little about VisiCalc. If I do C2 plus C3, C2 plus C3, all right, worked, 31, OK. And of course, we haven't really used anything, so we still have 90K. Just out of curiosity. Nope, I was hoping I could like control D or something that, but it's not going to do it. Whatever, don't care. Um, can I just put a little line there just to make it look pretty? Nope, can't do that. Oh, it really didn't like that. Huh. As you can, oh, I'm down to 89k. As you can tell, I have no idea what I'm doing in VisiCalc, but I do know that if I decrease my whores expenses down to $19, my monthly outlay, assuming this is monthly, it could be weekly, it could be daily, although that could get a little expensive, is 25 bucks. I mean, in 1983, we're looking at like 100 and some dollars now. So that's a lot. So we're going to have to dial it back a bit on the, well, just, we'll back it off on this and we'll just keep the whiskey, right? Let's stick with the good stuff. That's VisiCalc. Now, how does one exit VisiCalc? All right, but wait, there's more, as Billy Mays used to say. This next one, admittedly, is a, is a really neat accomplishment. And I want to be careful how I talk about it because I think it is a really neat accomplishment and cool. 
but it has no historical context with the Model 4 and what it was like to actually use back in its day, and that's Fusix. Up to the date, I'm just going to hit enter at the prompt, I don't care. And I should get a welcome to Fusix login. Okay, root. And you can set a password, but I don't really see the need. So where am I? By the way, it's not going to be the fastest, which whatever. We have the root directory here. Um, the one thing I know, at least as default out of the box, if I try to use VI, the terminal type here is dumb, so it doesn't like it. I think it's going to whine at me any second here. And while this name may not be a speed demon, the fact that there's a Nix-like operating system running on a TRS-80 Model 4 is, is, a, is a neat trick. And it runs on a bunch of other things. It actually also runs on the Color Computer 3, which is something I want to play with. All right, nothing there. Let's see. Yeah, bin dumb is a not a known terminal type. Let's see what's in bin. It's probably going to scroll off the screen. There's a bunch of stuff. Grab, mount. I don't know how to type a... Can I see, on the Model 16, I can do control, bang. Nope. Oh, let's see. I am brandy new to this, so if you're wondering why I'm struggling so much, well, welcome to learning, I guess. Can I do dash AL? More. Grab a Snickers. I don't even know when the last time I had a Snickers was. Hmm, well. There we go. Banner base name BD Cal. Cat CH grep Schmem. Check some CP date. Decomp der name DOS read. I don't know what that's about. Oh, enter. As you can tell, this is not going to be the fastest. We have the add editor. F disk. Halt. LL. Ooh, that'll be a good one. Page size. Print env. STTY. I wonder if I could cross compile my deload server to run on this. That would be neat. Okay. Can I control C you? Will you quit? Yes, you will. Very cool. Uh, oops. There we go. Path bin s uh, user bin slash bin log name root home root. So I think that's going to do it for the Model 4 upgrade to 128K. Um, I really just did it so I could play with Fusix because I thought Fusix was fun. There are a few applications out there, and there were back in the day, that support 128K like VisiCalc and some others, but there's not a ton because the installed base of these things were 64K. And by that point, you know, um, other machines, PCs were coming around and um, Radio Shack's view on the Model 4 turned into, we'll get it out of the catalog, but damn it, the schools still like it. So I guess we'll just give it less and less catalog real estate until we finally punt the thing. And by then it said Model 4D on it and had a Tandy label. But either way, the TRS-80 Model 4 is now decked out. It is a decked out 1980s TRS-80 with high-res graphics from last time, and now 128K of memory, done on the cheap with 41256 RAM chips. So join me next time when I'll be up to some kind of shenanigans, hijinks, or other fun activities with a Tandy Radio Shack computer. I'm TJB Chris. We'll catch you on the flip side.